At the time Shar Kalishari ascended to the throne in 2218 or 2217 BCE, the Akkadian Empire was not in a great state. The situation in Sumer was uneasy. Perhaps unsurprisingly, the ever-rebellious Sumerian city-states only looked for a reason to revolt. Shar Kalishari's predecessors more often than not had to deal with the Sumerian uprisings and it was increasingly becoming apparent that the new king's authority was going to have to be asserted by the force of arms. Further east, the land of Ilan was still a part of the empire. The Akkadian loyalist Kita was succeeded by what was believed to be his nephew Puzur in Shushina. The new Elamite governor remained loyal for the time being. The northwestern parts of the empire were also becoming increasingly unstable, with the rise and spread of the Amorites threatening to undermine the Akkadian authority. They had fought alongside the rebels in the past and were soundly defeated by Naram Sin. Now they were biding their time and waiting for the right moment to establish their own independence. However, perhaps the most worrying for Shar Kalishari was the rapidly emerging and increasingly imminent threat of the Gutians. Little is known about the origins of the Gutians. Their home was the land of Gutium, located to the north of Sumer, beyond the realm of the Akkadian Empire. Traditionally unfriendly to the kings of Akkad, Gutian slowly but steadily grew in power during the reigns of Shar Kalishari's predecessors. Akkadian sources mention Sarlagab, a Gutian ruler especially problematic for the Akkadian holdings in Sumer. As the Gutian raids into the Akkadian territory increased, it became apparent that confrontation was inevitable. Following decades of wars and battle during the reign of Naram Sin, the Akkadian treasury was deprived of much of its wealth. What was passed to the new king was likely not enough to finance another prolonged war. In order to fill the treasury, the Akkadians increased taxation across the realm, an action that was not favorably looked upon by many of the empire's subjects, especially the Sumerians. Predictably, discontent towards the Akkadian rule quickly turned violent, and before he knew it, Shar Kalishari was facing a revolt in Sumer. It is unknown who exactly the instigators were, as many Sumerian city-states reportedly stayed loyal to Akkad. Lugalu Shumgal, the Ansi of Lagash, for example, had been a loyal servant to Naram Sin and likewise stayed loyal to Shar Kalishari. Either way, in the second year of his reign, Shar Kalishari marched to Sumer and reportedly faced the rebels in the mountains. The inscription describing the campaign is unfortunately too fragmentary to offer the details, but it is clear that the Akkadian king was victorious and the revolt was put down in the same year. In the following period, Shar Kalishari engaged in several construction projects across Sumer, notably appointing General Puzur Eshtar in the fourth year of his reign to oversee the building of the Temple of Enlil. Several of Shar Kalishari's regnal years were thus named after temple's construction. The 6th, 7th and 8th year all concerned the king's construction of Enlil's temple in Nippur. While the construction projects were going on, tensions with the Gutians were reaching the boiling point. Constant raids and hostilities finally forced the Akkadian king to react and launch another military campaign. In the eleventh year of his reign, while the foundations of the temples of the goddess Ananitim and of the god Abba in Babylon were being laid down, Shar Kalishari and his force directly clashed with the Gutian king Sarlagab. It is unknown whether Shar Kalishari was defending against the Gutian attack or perhaps launched an attack of his own, but the result of the battle was the Akkadian victory. King Sarlagab of Gutian was captured and taken prisoner. Although reportedly victorious, Shar Kalishari had very little time to celebrate his triumph. To the northwest, the Amorites were launching a revolt of their own. The Akkadian king was thus forced to leave Sumer and immediately marched to the other corner of the empire. 
In Lagash, Lugal Ushumgal was succeeded by Puzarmama, a new NC who also swore loyalty to the Akkadian crown. The Emirate campaign was by no means easy for Shar Kalishari. Although he claimed successive victories, the campaign lasted for at least three years and he was not able to achieve long-term stability of his realm. In his twelfth year, the Akkadian king clashed with the Emirates, subsequently naming it the year in which Shar Kalishari was victorious against Amuru. Apparently his victory was not decisive, as the king was forced to stay in Upper Mesopotamia and continue the battles. In the following year, the two armies clashed again in the region of Besir or Basar, the core Amuru territory, known as the Mountain of the Amorites. Shar Kalishari claimed victory once more, but yet again the Akkadians were not able to subdue the rebels. As the war dragged into Shar Kalishari's 14th regnal year, the Akkadians and Amorites met on the field of battle for the third time. According to the Akkadian records, Shar Kalishari defeated his foes once again and finally concluded his campaign. The extent of this claimed victory is unknown, as the Akkadian presence starts to wane in the area from this point on. Subsequent rebellions across the empire suggest that Shar Kalishari was either forced to conclude his campaign early without a decisive victory, or that his possible failure to crush the rebellion resulted in other subjects following the same path and declaring independence. Whatever the case may be, the Akkadians left the land of the Amuru and were soon faced with renewed and increased problems in the east. Sumerian rulers, who were apparently left by themselves at this time, started fighting amongst themselves in order to increase their own influence and authority. It appears that a dispute between Lagash and Ur saw Puzer Mama of Lagash make territorial gains, which is reported in a letter apparently sent to Shar Kalishari. This is what Puzer Mama, governor of Lagash, said. Sulum and Eapin, since the time of Sargon, belonged to the territory of Lagash. Ur-Utu, when he served as governor of Ur for Naram-Sin, paid two minas of gold for them. Ur-A, governor of Lagash, took them back. The consequence is that Puzer Mama should have Sulum and their pin. However, unfortunately for Shar Kalishari, the Sumerian disputes were nothing compared to what was happening further east, more specifically in Elam. Puzur in Shushinat, the governor of Elam, broke away from the Akkadian rule and declared himself king of Elam. Moreover, Puzur in Shushinat conquered his local Elamite rivals in Anshan and Shimashki, effectively uniting much of Elam under his rule. The Akkadian language was promptly replaced with Elamite on all the official documents, now written in the Elamite linear script. The newly crowned king of Elam did not stop there. He set his sights on his former overlord, King Shar Kalishari of Akkad. As both rulers prepared for war, it was the Elamite king who invaded Sumer and marched further towards Akkad. In about 2202 BCE, the two armies met at Akshak, not far from the city of Akkad itself. The outcome of the battle was disputed, with both sides apparently claiming victory. Shar Kalishari named the 15th year of his reign, the year in which Shar Kalishari brought the battle against Ilam and Zahara in front of Akshak and was victorious. Contrary to the Akkadian claims, the inscriptions of ur -Namu, of the later 3rd dynasty of Ur, claim that Puzur in Shushinak was victorious conquering numerous cities in Mesopotamia and going as far as Akkad itself. The Akkadian Elamite War, however, likely did not result in the Elamite conquest of Akkad, as claimed by the later Sumerian sources, typically anti-Akkadian in nature. 
Battles between Shar Kalishari and Puzorin Shushinat continued into the following year. Although the Akkadian ruler once again claimed victory and named his 16th regnal year after it, Shar Kalishari was clearly not able to decisively defeat the Elamite army. In fact, Puzer Mama of Lagash broke away from Akkad himself, assuming the title of Lugal or King of Lagash. It remains unknown how Shar Kalishari concluded this war, as he continued to claim success in his inscriptions, despite losing effective control over much of Sumer. He called his 17th regnal year as the year in which the yoke was imposed on Gutian, implying that he secured some degree of dominance over the Gutians. Shar Kalishari continued to claim at least nominal authority over Sumer and recorded at least six more regnal year names, although most of the inscriptions are too fragmentary to help us understand the events that followed. He passed away in 2193 BCE, leaving a fragmented empire and numerous enemies ready to prey on its pieces. We're introducing the Super Tanks. The Super Thanks button allows you, the viewers, to show an extra gratitude to the channel and get your comments highlighted and noticed not only by myself, but other viewers as well. Underneath the video, you will see a heart with a dollar sign in it. You can enter any amount that you find suitable. Hopefully you enjoy the content. Special thanks to History with Sai. Nico, Chris Ernst, Stephen Ball, Tim Lane, Uncountable, ABC Shake, Panayotis Yanopoulos, Argiris Margaritis, Fred Leckie, Derek Wildstar, Labelle Olmier, Padre91, Huel Sally Briggs, Mercy and Thane, Luis Aldames, Vineyard Illuminations, and the State Care for their continuous support. This was 1XTV, and we'll see you again soon.